Alumni, industrial partners, and friends, welcome to the College of Engineering's 65th anniversary video. It covers the period from 1947 to Momentum II, the breakthrough fundraising campaign for the University of Miami. As we reflect on our six plus decades of accomplishments, it becomes clear how extensively our past efforts connect with our present day strategic directions, as underscored by our Momentum II goals. The College of Engineering at the University of Miami has prospered over time because engineering products and processes have been responsible for most of the world's wealth creation. Although quite small in size, among the over 350 U.S. schools of engineering, the college has succeeded in maintaining a top one-third ranking because of knowledgeable leadership provided by its eight deans of engineering, commencing with Dean John Klaus in 1947. The college had its humble but auspicious beginnings in the Anastasia Building, with an inaugural enrollment of 400 undergraduates in the electrical, mechanical, and industrial engineering disciplines. During the 10-year period from 1947 until 1958, when Dr. Klaus served as dean, enrollment tripled mainly due to returning World War II veterans studying under the GI Bill. The veterans regarded engineering as a very viable profession based on their wartime experience about how technologies, especially radar and radio, contributed to the success of the war effort. Two more disciplines, civil engineering and architectural engineering, were added in 1948 and 1950 respectively. Also, the very first three female students were enrolled in 1949. The accreditation of the initial five engineering disciplines occurred at the beginning of Dean Theodore Weir's seven-year tenure from 1958 until 1965. More importantly, with the completion of the MacArthur Building in 1959 through the generosity of J. Neville MacArthur, the then School of Engineering and Architecture finally gained a permanent home. The Cold War, punctuated by Sputnik and the Cuban Missile Crisis, continued to highlight the relevance and importance of an engineering education. The third dean, Dean William Knopf, remained in office for five years, from 1965 until his untimely death in 1970. He is recognized for initiating an articulation agreement with the then Miami-Dade Community College so that students could transfer to the University of Miami to complete a four-year engineering degree. The late 1960s was also a period of intense engineering accomplishments, including the birth of ARPANET, the world's first operational packet switching network, and the progenitor of what is now the global internet, and culminating with the 1969 landing on the moon, considered to be the greatest single engineering achievement of all time. The fourth dean, Dean Howard Harenstein, was in office for three years, from 1972 until 1975. During his brief tenure, he initiated several research efforts in energy and the environment, including the establishment of the Clean Energy Research Institute. A number of electronic firsts occurred in this period, including the first computerized axle tomography, or CAT scanner, the first pocket calculator, and the first home computer. The 15, de Norman G. Einspruck, served from 1977 until 1990. Dean Einspruck initiated degree programs in biomedical and environmental engineering. He was also responsible for obtaining the funds to endow two professorships. With the establishment of the School of Architecture in 1983, the School of Engineering and Architecture was renamed the College of Engineering. Dean Einsbruck also played a role in expanding the college's physical space through the 1989 edition of the MacArthur Annex, funded by a $3 million donation from J. Neville MacArthur's daughter, Mrs. Jean MacArthur Davis. The 1980s was another period of exciting engineering innovations, from just-in-time manufacturing, to the introduction of the personal computer, to the development of the first magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, scanner. Dr. Martin Becker became the sixth dean for a four-year period, from 1990 until 1994. He established an undergraduate program in aerospace engineering 
and recognized the advantages of collaborating with the Frost School of Music and the School of Marine and Atmospheric Science. These collaborations ushered in an era of interdisciplinary activities that extends to today. The early 1990s saw the promulgation of a number of large nationally funded projects, including the Big Dig in Boston, the Human Genome Project, and the Nanotechnology Initiative. In addition to serving as the seventh dean of engineering from 1994 until 2007, Dr. M. Louis Tamares was also simultaneously, since 1983, the university's vice president of information technology. During his 13-year tenure, Dean Tamaris established the combined five-year BS and MS degree program, several off-campus MS programs, and the audio engineering and information technology minors. Interestingly, information technology, underscored by iPods, dot-coms, and cell phones, was the rage in the beginning of the 21st century. When I became the Dean of the College of Engineering in 1994, the need for additional computing facilities within the college was obvious. So we reached out to our industrial partners to fund student computing labs and desktop classrooms. These computing facilities allowed the students to work on projects and homeworks with the then state-of-the-art resources. However, with the ever-changing technologies, the college must constantly reach out to our industrial partners to help maintain the required cutting-edge teaching and learning technologies. That is why I applaud the college's recent initiative to put their educational software packages on an internally developed virtual or cloud platform. As part of Momentum 2, I urge our industrial partners to continue to support the college in these academic and scholastic endeavors. As I have stated on many occasions, I took over the helm of the university, a university that was well on its way to prominence as a national research university, thanks to the efforts of President Tad Foote since 2001, I've tried to assemble a leadership team that could continue, if not accelerate, our ascendance to becoming a world-class institution. For the Dean of the College of Engineering, we recruited a nationally recognized academic leader, Dean Jim Tien, who, as many of you are aware, is an elected member of the National Academy of Engineering. Since joining us in 2007, Dean Tien has already raised the national visibility of the college. Indeed, President Barack Obama visited the college in February of 2012 to personally review the college's recognized energy assessment effort. Additionally, and more recently, in December of 2012, our own governor, Rick Scott, presented Dean Tien and the college with a highly regarded medal for promoting higher education in Florida and helping to attract global talent in the Sunshine State. The University of Miami's meteoric rise in the U.S. News and World Report rankings from 67 in 2001 to 44 in 2012 is due in no small measure to the quality of engineering students that we've recruited and to the growing research reputation of the College of Engineering. This growth can only be sustained with the support of the college's alumni industrial partners and friends through their Momentum 2 contributions. In support of the university's aspirations of becoming an AAU quality institution, Dean Tian has established the college's vision as educating tomorrow's technology leaders for career success. In fact, in 2012, the Job Outlook survey reported that six out of the top 10 degrees most in demand were in engineering. And remarkably, all 10 of the top 10 bachelor degree starting salaries were garnered by engineering graduates. As we have seen, many of the initiatives begun throughout the college's history, such as articulation agreements, inter-school collaborations, clean energy research, named endowments, and expanded physical facilities, remain critical to our continuing growth and success. More specifically, the five Distinguished Momentum II goals are focused on education, students, faculty, institutes, and facilities. First and foremost, the college's overarching educational goal is to make research and education an integrated reality. Thus, whereas almost all schools of engineering are horizontally organized with an associate dean for undergraduate academics and an associate dean for graduate research, 
Here at the College of Engineering, we are vertically organized with an associate dean for undergraduate and graduate academics and an associate dean for undergraduate and graduate research. In fact, as we have expanded our research facilities, we have also opened them to all our students, including undergraduates, so that they may likewise develop their <coughs> open-ended research or critical thinking skills. Experience today suggests that the undergraduates are eager to participate in such research opportunities. These out-of-the-classroom skills are also critical in helping our graduates deal with new assignments and new positions, thus enhancing their potential for career success. A critical component of the integrated approach to research and education is the capstone experience. This senior level project would involve real world problems proposed by companies and would incorporate multidisciplinary team approaches to produce actual solutions such as commercial prototypes, patented products, and supply chain efficiencies. Not only will the students' critical thinking skills be enhanced through these open-ended challenges, but also the company facilitators will annually have about nine months to observe, say, three teams of seniors working on a company-specific problem before making their hiring decisions. The Company Endowed Capstone Project is therefore one of the Momentum II focus areas within the Distinguished Education Goal. Several companies are showing an interest in becoming a capstone partner. Fortinet, a global cybersecurity company, and the University of Miami are finalizing a pledge both to equip a cybersecurity laboratory and to fund annual capstone efforts that can make use of the laboratory. The college welcomes other companies to become capstone partners. As the Associate Dean of Engineering for Academics, I welcome the opportunity to emphasize the second Momentum II goal of helping the college recruit quality students who are in need of financial assistance. Given the college's unique integration of research and education, we are experiencing a 33% growth in our undergraduate enrollment from 750 in fall 2007 to almost 1,000 in fall 2012. Our MS and PhD enrollments are also growing. As a consequence, there is an even greater need for financial assistance among our undergraduate and graduate students. Such aid will also help further strengthen our inclusion of women and ethnic minorities. Mr. Roger Cook, a prominent entrepreneur and friend of the college, recognized the need for supporting African-American transfer students. The first recipient of the Cook Scholarship is Michael Telsey, who recently transferred from Miami-Dade College. I'm an electrical engineering student. I'm a transfer student. Usually transfer students don't get scholarship, and I was fortunate enough to be the first recipient of the Cook Scholarship for African-American engineering students. That will allow me to continue to do research, get knowledge, to solve real-world problems. Since becoming dean, it has been a privilege to have worked with my two associate deans and five department chairs in the recruitment of new faculty, especially in areas of critical need. I also appreciate the support provided by the provost. He recognizes the importance of faculty renewal. Over the past five years, Dean Tian and his colleagues have recruited 20 new faculty. While this is an impressive number of recruits, it should be noted that the actual number of faculty in engineering has remained fairly constant. Nevertheless, as a result of these recruits, the number of female faculty and the level of research funding have doubled. Additionally, the number of U.S. National Academy members on the engineering faculty is now at three. This is indeed extraordinary since there are only a total of nine National Academy members throughout the University of Miami. I would also like to acknowledge the fact that there is a need to grow the faculty resources in engineering. Certainly the distinguished and named professorships, goals of our Momentum II campaign, would help significantly in meeting this need. Given our growing need for faculty resources, we are indeed relying on the Momentum II campaign to partially fund, through pledges or bequests, additional faculty positions. The endowed professorships at the junior, senior, or distinguished level will not only provide needed resources, but also allow for the recruitment of renowned academics and the recognition of deserving individuals who are already on our faculty. As the Associate Dean of Engineering for Research, I also welcome this opportunity to address the fourth Momentum II goal of helping the college establish and maintain state-of-the-art research institutes. Certainly, we would welcome the Momentum II support of any aspect of our three strategic research thrust areas. First, 
Healthcare and Technobiology is focused on the application of technology to biomedical healthcare delivery issues, including personalized medicine, DNA sequencing, bioinformatics, preventive care, drug delivery, and neuroprosthetics. Second, Risk and Informatics is focused on sensors, imaging, big data analytics, evidence-based decision-making, risk analysis, financial services, and cybersecurity. Third, Sustainable Systems is focused on clean energy, fuel cells, water resources, climate change, food security, environmental spills, resilient construction, and smart structures and materials. As an example, and in regard to the third thrust area, I am proud to say that under the guidance of Drs. Antonio Nani and Francesco De Caso, our Structures and Materials Laboratory, SML, was recently accredited by the International Accreditation Service. As an accredited testing laboratory, we will be able to serve the local companies who may wish to have their research products or innovations certified under required ISO criteria. More importantly, and consistent with our integrated approach to research and education, the overwhelming reason for us to achieve accreditation is for educational purposes. Our undergraduate and graduate students will be able to participate in the SML activities and be trained in regard to measurement and testing procedures and quality control techniques. I would also like to address the need for suitable facilities. That is, without state-of-the-art research and education facilities, we cannot attract world-class faculty and students. Computing facilities are especially critical for a college of engineering. We must not only teach about new technologies, but also employ them in our research and educational efforts. The college has already invested some $3 million over a three-year period to put the 50 or so software packages that we require on an internally developed virtual academic computing platform, Viacomp, an effort which we initiated in 2007, even before the term cloud computing was coined. We were able to fully implement it in 2010 with some 1,400 College of Engineering users. This laptop-connected service, the only one of its kind throughout Florida's universities, allows for up to one-third of the college's users to work concurrently online. As a result, several rooms of desktops have been vacated for other uses. Today, students do not have to drive to campus to access such software as SolidWorks and LabVIEW. They are completely untethered from desktop computers and they have enough storage space and bandwidth to perform complex analyses from anywhere, anytime. As a mechanical engineer, I typically use ProEngineer, SolidWorks, and MATLAB. And in the past, to use these programs, you either had to buy your own license or you had to use them during computer lab hours, which are very limited. Now, because of Viacomp, you can access them anywhere there's Wi-Fi. So on the Miami Metro, there's Wi-Fi on board, so I can work on my assignments while I'm commuting on the train. Uh, this past Christmas, I went to England and Budapest, and I was able to do my assignments and work on my projects during vacation, which was a big advantage to me. I would just like to add that we have several possible Viacom extensions that we would like to pursue, hopefully with help from Momentum 2 contributions. For example, Vianet would allow the college to offer courses at a distance through a virtual academic network. Another facility that we have just begun to invest in is the expansion of our machine shop into a full-scale prototyping facility. It could be used to first train our students on the latest CAD CAM software and 3D printing techniques. Second, to provide our faculty with a competitive advantage by allowing them to propose, where appropriate, a physical prototype instead of a virtual simulation of the developed device. And third, to allow local companies and innovators access to such a state-of-the-art facility. Although Viacomp efficiencies and the effective management of the MacArthur facility will allow the College of Engineering to house perhaps a dozen additional faculty together with their required laboratories, it is a fact that the college is in need of additional space. We estimate that within the next decade, we will require another 90,000 gross square foot structure to supplement our current 120,000 gross square foot MacArthur building. The required structure will allow for a 300-seat collaboratorium, a multidisciplinary design laboratory, a big data fusion and visualization cave, 
and other specialized research and teaching spaces. It is also our hope that the Momentum 2 campaign will begin to make the engineering innovation complex a reality. Momentum has brought us here from our beginning in 1947. Momentum will carry us forward to a future of even greater success, one that can ensure our noble vision of educating tomorrow's technology leaders for career success. All of our current programs and efforts are geared towards tomorrow. Our endeavors in research and education are not only appropriately integrated and directed at enhancing critical thinking, they're also responding to the technical needs of all five sectors of the global economy, including services, manufacturing, construction, agriculture, and mining. Indeed, engineering has become a 21st century liberal art, incorporating the realms of inquiry, research, and analysis. This is what our programs strive to develop in every student. I now have the great privilege to conclude the COE at 65 video, chronicling the college's history from 1947 to the current Momentum 2 campaign. It is also my privilege to announce that we are honoring those who have made or are pledging to make a Momentum 2 donation by constructing a Momentum 2 donor wall, which identifies those alumni, industrial partners, and friends whose donations are at the leadership level. This Momentum 2 leadership wall, both in its physical and virtual representation, is a tribute to all of us who believe in the college's vision to educate tomorrow's technology leaders for career success.